Hey, what's up? My name is Antonio Battini and this is my first tutorial since I'm working as a lead VR 3D designer in IT company called BrightDoc. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create stylized Eagle Vision effect like in Witcher and Assassin's Creed games. Environment has nice outliner effect, but certain types of factors have glowing effect with appropriate color. As you can see, when I press the button, post-processing turns on and the allies become green, interactable objects become blue and enemies glow red. So, let's create a new basic level and first of all we have to do some changes in the project settings. Type in search bar post process and under custom depth stencil pass select enabled with stencil. If you don't enable this, uh, desired effect will not work. So let's create a new material. Call it M underscore PP underscore outline FX. And change the material domain to post process. In search bar type uh, blend. Blend and uh, under blendable location switch to before tone mapping because otherwise uh, uh, this effect won't work and you have to be sure that is blendable is checked on i will uh, try to do this uh, pretty fast uh, so uh, type the scene texel we need scene texel size and scene position we have to multiply scene texel size with the vector so create vector 2 uh, with uh, 0, 0.0 values drag uh, drag out the viewport uv and select uh, mask uh, component mask r and g channels and add this together and this would be our uv map for the scene depth now we have to multiply this with a scalar parameter, which I will call base emissive. And enter the default value of minus 4 because I have already made a test with it. Okay, so here we have our first part of our blueprint. So now we need to create a material function because I like to make blueprints organized. So type mf underscore outliner fx. We need an input node and it will be a scalar input. And I will copy everything until the scene depth paste it here and delete the vector 2 and we will connect our scalar vector to the multiply b now just connect the scene depth to the output result okay click save and uh, drag into our material our material function we have to copy it four times now press the right click and uh, type blur sample offsets and we have to connect first four nodes to our material function now we have to add everything together so connect the first two and the third and fourth with the second add and now we have to add these two together i will move this a little bit up and now connect the multiply to the another add node and uh, no uh, I don't want to connect this to emissive I have to multiply this with the color of the background so create a vector 3 and convert it to a parameter and call this base color emissive I will use a dark gray color for for the beginning but we can change this later in the material instance 
and we have to clamp this between 0 and 1. And now we can connect this to the emissive color. As you can see already in our viewport, uh, we have the outliner effect working. And now I will add a post-process volume to show you how, how does the outliner effect work. And under array, click the plus button, choose asset reference and drag the created material into the slot. So you see the post-process effect is working but uh, I want to create some geometry here so that you can see the outlining effect. I will take the sphere because it has a lot of triangles, make it a little bit bigger and I will drag a cube. You see the basic outlining is, is working. Okay, open up the material. So make a commentary box. This would be outliner fx drag it out because we need some space now in the second part uh, we have to isolate somehow the objects which we want to glow so we can do this by creating a scene texture and switch this to custom custom stencil Okay, drag the color, so we need a component mask with just R channel and clamp this between 0 and 1 and I will create a reroute uh, declaration node because the blueprint will uh, look much more cleaner and type here highlight mask and this part of the blueprint will isolate uh, glowing objects from our outlining effect. So, if we wanna, if we wanna separate these two, we need a lerp node. drag it a little bit here and connect to emissive color and we will be lerping this with our highlight mask now I'm going to invert this effect because I only want to colorize uh, the black parts uh, and I will multiply this with some color but first I have to think about it how to do this and type the scene texture and we need post-process input zero drag uh, the color and create a component mask with RGB channels and create another lerp node create a vector 3 and convert this to a parameter and I will call this uh, glow color 1 and I will make it green And the alpha for this lerp would be our highlight mask. Now I will create another reroute declaration node. I will call this highlight color. Color. Okay. So, I will take the highlight color and multiply this with uh, the scalar parameter because I want to boost 
the power of uh, glowing effect. So create a scalar parameter and type highlight glow power. And for the default value, I will type 10. Connect to the multiply and connect to the other multiply node. And now uh, I have to clamp this clamp and add these two together and connect to the B of our LERP. Now I think this effect should work. I will select sphere and we have to go down there under rendering section. Click advanced and tick render custom depth pass and under custom depth stencil value type in one and now you see our sphere is glowing uh, green okay so now we need more space because i want to add uh, two more colors Convert it to a parameter and call it glow color 2. Create uh, another one and call it glow color 3. So we need two more lerp nodes. So we need two more lerp nodes. Connect this to A. Okay. And the color to the B. This will be red and the third one will be blue. So if you want to change uh, the value of the stencil pass, we have to subtract it from the red uh, channel. So create a clamp node and uh, drag this out and type minus. Click on subtract we will be subtracting drag the custom stencil here okay so from the first one i will subtract one and from the second one i will subtract two and uh, now just be sure that everything is connected and the last LERP node is connected to the highlight color. So you can see if we type in under custom depth stencil value number two, the box becomes red. And when we type three, the box becomes blue. Okay. Okay, so create material instance and type mi underscore pp underscore outline glow fx. Now I will show you how to change uh, density of the wireframe on the mesh. But uh, first uh, drag it here. And we need uh, some mesh with uh, more polygons okay with uh, with the base color emissive if your color is brighter you will see more details in the mesh and if your color is uh, darker you will just get the outline effect around uh, the actor so I'll drag uh, drag in uh, the character I have to position it uh, inside of the post process volume box so you see our character has a nice outlining effect but if I change color brightness uh, the details start to appear you will need uh, especially this slider if you have a lot of uh, nanite geometry in, in your scene and uh, it can look uh, a little bit overblowing because of a uh, lot of polygons. 
and for the end I will show you how to make uh, a button so that you can toggle post-process effect uh, inside of your game. I need a third person character. Okay, the character is working. So open the blueprint. Type in event begin play because uh, I want uh, to be sure that uh, when you start your game a post-process effect will be turned off. I will type F key, so click on the camera and just like in uh, post-process volume type in material and under post-process materials click the plus and choose asset reference and drag here into a slot our material instance of the post-processing effect. So we need our camera and set the post-process blend wave. Post-process value would be zero for event begin play and uh, when uh, the F button is released. When I press the button, the value will, will be 1. So save this, close, and when I hit play, you can see when I press F button, our post-processing effect toggles on and off. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and hit the like button.